What's the story, Morning Glory? What's the word, Hummingbird? Thank you so much for clicking on my channel and for joining me for this review of 90 Day Happily Ever After, Season 8, Episode 10, The Couple's Grim. So let's get started with Michael and Angela. So Michael and Angela are back. Now, we knew this last week when they showed us the teaser of them showing up for this week's episode, and I was surprised last week. I did not think that Michael and Angela were going to be featured on this season because I've been hearing so many rumors about how they were not going to be featured because of the um, domestic violence issue or whatever the hell was going on between Michael and Angela where it caused Michael to run away from home and because their relationship is so incredibly abusive um, and I don't know I don't think any charges were filed against Angela but because of the fact that something really horrible happened and he had to run away from her he had to literally run away from her left everything behind because he had to get to a safe place um, I really thought that they were not going to be featured because they don't want to TLC doesn't want to um, promote this type of behavior or um, shed any light or put us I just they didn't, I didn't think they wanted to have anything to do with Angela, period. But here we are. They are here. They are part of season eight. So let's go ahead and talk about it. So it starts off with them at a bar or a restaurant. And it's the day before his um, interview for his visa. So they are in the Ivory Coast, which I guess is where the American embassy is. And she's trying to help him with the questions that may be asked of him on the day of his interview. I'm looking at this scene. I'm not paying any any attention to what the hell they're talking about because I'm so distracted by what Mima is wearing. What the hell is Angela wearing? I, I didn't understand. Um, I, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. Um, it, it was so unflattering. It was so inappropriate for any situation. Um, I didn't understand what the hell was going on with that outfit. But anyways, whatever. So they give us the full history of their seven year abusive relationship. Of course, they do not highlight or show any of the actual abuse. Like when Angela showed up in um, Nigeria and she was banging on Michael. She showed up out of nowhere. She, she did like a pop up in Nigeria. Y'all remember that, right? When she did this pop up on him because she thought that he was cheating or something. She showed up out of nowhere, um, banging on the door, banging on the gate of his house uh destroying his car like pulling um the fender or whatever from his car just acting a plum psychotic mess and of course when they were going through their history of their relationship and how they met and what they've been through the ups and downs the ins and outs they showed none of the abuse that michael had to endure from angelo okay fine so let's move on so the next time that we see them they're in their hotel room and angela's facetiming her family the day before the interview and you know they want us to believe that her grandkids and her daughter are super excited about michael coming over uh to america and to live with them michael talks about how nervous he is to be living with Angela and her family and he has every right to be nervous he has every right to be nervous I don't see Michael blending in with this family at all so I'm hoping that at some point we get some footage of how Michael was adjusting to living with Angela and her family how her family received him how he got along with her family with her grandkids and her daughter etc so as her, as she's FaceTiming her family, she tells her daughter Skyla, you know, say bye to daddy. And Skyla says, he ain't my daddy. Moving on from there. So it's the day of the interview. So it starts off horribly, right? It's the day of his interview at the embassy. Um, he's getting ready, packing up his documents and whatnot. Angela was supposed to go with him. She has on her American flag scarf, so she's ready to go with him. But she finds out that he included in his documents that he's supposed to present to the embassy. He also has some screenshots of text messages between him and Angela when they were fighting about something. So Angela is extremely pissed off. Like she doesn't understand why he would want to show the embassy any text messages messages between them where they are fighting where they're having an argument she thinks it's going to be like an automatic denial if they see that she's probably just really embarrassed by how she was talking to him in those text messages maybe that's why she was so upset Michael tells us the reason why he was including those screenshots among other things that he was going to show the embassy he wanted to prove that they were a real couple and a real couple argues so you can't have a relationship where everything is you know roses and rainbows and unicorns all the time because 
because it's not realistic. And it's going to show that maybe you're forcing it or you're, uh, you're, you know, you're portraying a fake relationship if everything is always so wonderful and copacetic and you never argue and you get along all the time and you're happy all the time. So he wanted to show some of the downside of the relationship. That's what he was trying to make the relationship. You know, he wanted them to see how real the relationship was. Um, so Angela felt like it wasn't necessary. She felt like there's other ways to show that they were a real relationship. Like, um, I guess, uh, him communicating with her family or something like pictures of, um, I don't know. I don't really remember what she said, but there, she was like, there's other ways to show that we're a real couple other than showing them our arguments. I don't know how that goes. I've never been through this process. So I don't know if you have to show them arguments or if you can show them other ways that y'all are a real couple. I don't know. So they got into this horrible fight. Um, she's really upset with him. And she tells him, well, I'm not going to go with you to the embassy. You're a grown man. You can do this on your own. You don't need me there to hold your hand. So she refuses to go with them. He begs her to go with him to the embassy uh, because he needs her there for moral support. And she's like, nope, you handle it. You got this. And she doesn't go. After he leaves... This crazy woman is like, oh man, I really should have gone with him because if he doesn't get his visa, I'm going to feel so guilty. I'm going to feel like it's because I didn't go with him if he doesn't get his visa. What? You were so adamant about not going with him and then you feel bad that you didn't go with him. I can't take the hot and cold, the up and down. Um, I, I can't take that. I need people to be consistent. You made it. You make a decision. Stick with it. Don't change your mind. Like literally 30 seconds later. Now you're boohooing like, oh, I should have gone with them. And if it doesn't get his visa, I'm going to feel so guilty. It's going to be all my fault. Girl, please miss us with all of that. So yeah, Michael and Angela are back. I'm not particularly happy about it because watching them to me, it's, it's uncomfortable. It's just like watching Nicole in my mood. It's like, it's like you're waiting. You're constantly waiting for the other shoe to drop. You know that um, they can't be happy forever. You know that if they do get along, it's not going to last. And so you're constantly waiting for Angela to blow up. You're worried about Michael making a mistake, saying something wrong, doing something wrong that's going to cause her to absolutely blow up. But you know what? If he likes it, we ain't got no choice but to love it. Moving on to Nicole and my mood. So Nicole starts off by telling us things were beginning to kind of settle down between her and my mood. Um, she's allowing him to stay with her for the next few days until they figure out what they want to do with their relationship. Do they want to stay together and work on it or should they go their separate ways? So he's sleeping on an air mattress. You know, she had her rules and regulations about do's and don'ts. Like we're not going to be sharing the same bed and blah, 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 blah. But you can stay here until we figure things out. So she thought things were getting better. She had some hope that they were going to work on their relationship but all of that went to hell when um they began fighting again um she said that Mahmoud had accused her of cheating of course the way she presents it it's like he just accused her out of nowhere like he just woke up one morning and was like oh Nicole I think you're cheating on me let's argue about it she doesn't really give like a, a true backstory um she said that she was on her way home no, okay, so she doesn't really give us the backstory of why he would all of a sudden accuse her of cheating, but Mahmoud does. So Mahmoud tells us that um, a few days ago, she was on her way home from work. It was around 8 o'clock. She contacted him and said, look, I'm on my way home. She didn't come home until 2 o'clock in the morning, y'all, and she was drunk. So when he asked her, like, you know, um, oh, he wanted to look at her phone. So when she came home late, I guess she gave him whatever excuse she gave him, and she he wanted to look at her phone to see if she was telling him the truth about, whatever she said and she refused to give him her phone and so because she refused to give him her phone he automatically assumed that she was hiding something and of course if you're married and you don't want your spouse to look at your phone you must be hiding another relationship so um then he ends up telling her, like in their in the middle of their argument, he tells her that he no longer has any feelings for her. Now, Nicole sa says to us that when he said that, that really hurt deep for her. Um, him talking about wanting a divorce had no effect on her because he always talks about getting a divorce or wanting a divorce. You know, she became immune to the word divorce. But when he told her, I no longer have feelings for you, um, she was like, okay, this is real. You know, I'm losing my husband. And all of a sudden, you know, now she's sad. So they have a conversation. 
And he wanted to know, you know, where she was, what she was doing to make her come home at two o'clock in the morning drunk. She tells him that as she was on her way home, one of her friends called her and had a, her friend had a fight with somebody and Nicole needed to go comfort her friend or go get her friend or something. So they probably ended up going out drinking or whatever. So she takes her friend out, they go out drinking, she comes home at two o'clock in the morning and Mahmoud is like, okay, fine, whatever. Let me see your phone to back up what you're telling me. She was still refused to let him see the phone. So he doesn't believe anything that she's saying. And she thinks that the reason why he's upset, it's not because of the phone situation. She tells us, or oh, he's just mad because I'm an American and he doesn't like, you know, the way that I live my American life. I'm like, girl, I don't know what the hell you're talking about, but it seems like the man is upset because you're not letting him see your phone. You come home at two o'clock in the morning and you come home drunk and he wants to see your phone to see if you can back up what you're telling him. Okay. So this whole thing about, oh, he's mad because I'm an American. He doesn't like how I live my American life. Nicole no we don't know what that means we don't know what you're talking about he's mad like a lot of husbands would be mad if their wife is telling them at eight o'clock I'm on my way home and then there's like no communication until you come stumbling in drunk at 2 a.m so Mamu tells her you know we have a lot of issues you know got an issue with how you dress I got an issue with your drinking so I'm just not going to put up with anymore and then she talks about how oh you're just trying to control me you're controlling me and he's like you know what don't even look it don't even got to get that deep okay if you think I'm controlling you then I'm going to remove myself from your life you can do what you want you can have all the freedom that you want and she's like okay fine but then you can't stay here anymore you need to leave and so he's like, say less. And so he packs up his bag, or I think his bag stayed packed because he knew this day was coming. So his bag stayed packed. Um, you don't got to get ready if you're already ready. And he was already ready to leave. So he just took his suitcase and he rolled on out of there and he left. And then, you know, she, you know, she starts crying again. And um, Mahmoud, you know, he's waiting for his Uber to take him to his friend's house. Mahmoud acts like he's done. So I'm still trying to figure out the timeline of when she called the police on him and he got arrested for domestic violence. I'm still trying to, under, like, did he come back again? Did she go searching for him in the streets of LA again and bring him back home? Like, I'm so sick and tired of her kicking him out and then he comes back and then, you know, he leaves. Me. I'm so sick and tired of that. So was this the final time that he left or was there another time when he came because I'm really trying to understand when did this happen did it happen after filming like what's going on I don't know but he left this is the second time that he left and all I can think of was like Mahmood you should never ever ever let someone kick you out more than once okay don't ever allow anyone to kick you out of their home more than once and this is the second time this woman has kicked you out moving on to Sophie and Rob I hate talking about Sophie and Rob because Sophie is such a baby. She's such a baby. I mean, Rob ain't no better, but damn. Okay, so now they're in the lingerie shop because, you know, they talked about how they're going to, you know, spice things up between them. He says he likes he likes it when she wears costumes. And so they're at this lingerie shop looking for um, a costume for her to wear. Okay, whatever. Fine. Um, and I'm thinking to myself, they're going to get into an argument. They're going to get into an argument because they went into a shop like this before and they got into an argument. So she was supposed to try on like a schoolgirl outfit, right? So they're, look, they're looking at the, all the little schoolgirl, which to me is kind of weird that a man would want you know his woman to dress up like a, a, a child basically but whatever so um she's looking for a schoolgirl outfit and um he also tried on something really risque that she wanted him to try on it was some type of harness or something he wasn't comfortable but he went along with it and he tried it on he was really uncomfortable wearing it because he was completely top uh, shirtless and he had he had to put on like the strappy like it was like a strap harness thing i don't know what it was i don't live that life so i don't know what this hell what this was so he wants her to try on the schoolgirl outfit. So she's in the dressing room and she's like, well, if I feel like I look dumb, I'm not going to come out. I'm not going to show you if I'm not happy with how I look. Well, she wasn't happy with how she looked in the skirt, which was like 
the basis of the outfit because there's nothing else that she had that was schoolgirl uniform like other than the damn skirt um her own skirt she just had like a, a plain white pleated little mini skirt that was her own skirt and um she didn't like how the schoolgirl skirt looked on her so she wasn't gonna wear it so she just tried on the top which was just an ordinary top it wasn't even like a schoolgirl uniform uniform top except for the tie so she comes out wearing her regular white skirt that she walked in there with and this regular top top and Rob looked at her and he was like this is nothing like a schoolgirl outfit and she got upset because he didn't compliment her and she's like well I'm wearing the top I'm wearing the top but he's like but your top looks ordinary it's nothing spicy it's nothing like what I expected your top is ordinary you won't even put on the skirt and so they start arguing because she's upset because he didn't compliment her and um I'm like, okay, here we go again. Here we go again. So they get in the car. They're still arguing. Sophie keeps saying that Rob doesn't find her attractive. Um, you know, he's like, oh, you don't find me attractive. You're probably thinking about those online girls because you don't think I'm attractive because you didn't compliment me. And I'm like, okay, she's just projecting her own insecurities on him. She's very insecure with herself. I think it's quite obvious that she is. I don't know why she is but it seems like she's extremely insecure with herself and so she assumes that he is also not happy with the things that she's not happy about herself so she's like oh you just don't find me okay whatever Sophie so she keeps on going on about you know you don't find me attractive you know you don't give me enough compliments and um Rob says that he feels like that she doesn't even like him. And I've been thinking that for a while. And I was like, I don't think Sophie even likes Rob because there's nothing that Rob could do that makes her happy. Even when he does the things that she wants him to do, she's not like completely okay with it. You know, it's not like, it's not solving any problems. Um, like when they went to therapy and he complimented her, she was like, yeah. I guess that's what I'm talking about. But you could still tell that she was sort of like uncomfortable as he was getting closer and closer to her, like physically moving closer to her on the couch. She still seemed kind of uncomfortable. So I don't know. I don't know what this what this girl wants. And so he's like, I feel like you don't even like me. And then he asked her, is it somebody else? Is there somebody else? And she's like, what? What? What are you talking about? I don't even know what you're talking. You know exactly what he's talking about, Sophie. You know exactly what he's implying. So she's like, he tells her, you know, I can never do right by you. You're always upset with me. And when he asked her, is there somebody else? Um, all she could do was act confused, but she did not explicitly say, no, there isn't. So they get to the apartment. He's in the middle of saying something to her. She just gets up and walks out. So in the apartment, they continue to argue. He tells her that maybe, you know, she should find um someone else someone who appreciates her more who can give her what she wants because evidently he's not able to so she's acting really confused um then she brings up the second phone she says I know you got a second phone because it rained that day and he was like I don't have a second phone it was my own phone my one and only phone that was connected to the bluetooth and she was like I don't know what she said but they're arguing about this stupid second phone situation he denies having a second phone so then she drops that because she doesn't have proof of it so she can't go really far with that argument so then she's like why don't you just be nice to me all I have to do is just be nice to me to me that translates to you just have all, all you have to do is do what I say you know her trying to basically like control him when she says just be nice to me I feel like she's really saying just do what I want you to do and I'll be happy forget about what you want or how you feel just do the things that make me happy then she says something about, you know, how would you feel if I found somebody else and I treated them better than I treat you and I cooked and, and I cleaned for them and I did this and that for them because they treat me nice because they treat me how I want to be treated. And so I will be more willing to do things for them. He was like, maybe that's what you need to do. And so she's like, oh, well, I'm out of here. And so then she storms out. She storms out and he doesn't even go out and chase her. And she expected him to come running after her, which he didn't. Now, like I said, um, word on the curb was that they actually broke broke up in real life I'm wondering if this was that breakup um hopefully it was because Rob and Sophie don't need to be together at all um the relationship is is horrible it's just as bad as everybody else's relationship on this show so hopefully this was the breakup that really ended it all
moving on to ed and liz so liz and riley are packing up <laughs> ed threw them out because he's done with liz and they gotta go find somewhere else to live so i guess they're gonna go back to san diego and uh, riley's gonna go back to go live with their dad or something i have no idea what's going on so they're packing up their stuff and um liz tells us how she had given up everything everything to move to Arkansas to be with Ed and she sure did she gave up that really good job being a partner in that restaurant with her friend she left all of that behind so she can come chasing um, Big Ed to Arkansas so she says that you know the hardest thing about breaking up is that she's gonna have to start all over again and it's just a whole lot of work so before leaving um, Ed wants to have a minute alone with Riley so Riley sits down on the couch next to Ed and he tells her I'm sorry she accepts his apology then she tells him that she loves him which really made me mad because I'm like this little girl has no idea <laughs> has no idea how bad Ed is and how bad he treats her mom she just has no clue and so but then again maybe her relationship with Ed is separate and apart from his relationship with Liz so maybe you know if, if she thinks that the sun rises and sets on Ed. She's got the right to feel that way. I don't know, but I still feel some kind of way that she would tell this man, I love you. And this is the man that's kicking you and your mom out. So she also, okay. So, um, whatever stupid games he's playing with Liz are affecting her are affecting Riley and Liz even talks about how well maybe that was next week's episode when she talks about how you know she uh, yeah that's next week's episode where we saw her saying you know I never would have you know involved my daughter in any of this if I would have known that he wasn't serious about you know having a future with me anyway so Liz reminds him before she leaves she reminds him when trash day is and when he should be taking out the trash and I'm like why does she have to remind him that because does this mean that she was the one that was taking out the trash while they were living together like I didn't understand why she had to rem like why wouldn't he know that why wouldn't he know when trash day is that's weird because I I don't know why why didn't he take out the trash I don't know I thought that was strange because it's as if he didn't take out the trash like she was the one that did that so after Liz um drives off Ed tells us that he doesn't feel like he failed he feels like he dodged a bullet by breaking up with Liz I hope we never ever in life have to see Ed again after this season is over with there's just no rhyme or reason of why we would ever, ever have to see Ed ever again. I don't want to see if he finds a new girl, a new woman or whatever, um, a new foreign woman to be with just to stay on this show. I, I, I don't I, no, No, please. No. Tell him no. TLC, please tell him no, no, no. We've had enough of Ed. We have seen all that we can possibly see of ed moving on to emily and kobe so um now it's time for them to begin the process of this wedding so there's like of course you know multiple steps that lead up to the wedding i'm assuming because the first thing that needs to be done it's called the knock door which is when kobe's family like some elders or whatever in his family go to emily's parents and like they will literally knock on the door of emily's parents well, they don't live in Cameroon, so it's not their house, but there are Airbnb, I guess. I don't know. Knock on the door of where they're staying. And that's officially beginning the whole wedding ceremony because the knock on the door is the the intent to it's, it's the way that they are intending to show that, look, we are serious about Kobe marrying your daughter. And this is how the process begins. OK, fine. So Kobe's family. They're going to go to Emily's parents to express that Kobe intends to marry their daughter. Um, Emily's father is supposed to give a list of what he wants, including the bride price. And if the family can provide Emily's father with everything that he wants on his list, then it proves that Kobe is capable of taking care of Emily. Emily's mom still has a lot of concerns about this tradition, about this process, because she doesn't, the whole thing of her daughter being given away for a price or being sold to Kobe's, it's really rubbing her the wrong way. She is not comfortable with that at all. Emily is just like, you know what? I just want everything to go peacefully. I don't want my mom to embarrass me um, in front of my in-laws. I just want everything to go 
as planned. So the day comes, Kobe's family arrives. Did they do the knock on the door? They come in, um, they sit down and, um, they pres- uh, Emily's family presents their daughter to them. So Emily comes out, they present the daughter to Kobe's family and Kobe's family. They talk about how Emily is going to become a part of their family. Now she's leaving her family to become a part of Kobe's family and she's going to be their property. So heaven help us when they said the word property, because now both of Emily's parents, at first it was just the mom that was struggling with this. Now her dad has jumped in and they're like, well, we don't really feel comfortable with the word property. And Kobe's family was like, and why not pray tell? Why does that bother you? Because that's exactly what she is. Um, so they're like, yeah, we don't see her as property and we don't want to give up our daughter. And I'm just thinking to myself, Y'all do know that Emily and Kobe are already married. (laughs) They are already married. Okay. And Emily ain't leaving your family. Okay. When y'all go back to America, Emily is going to be coming with y'all along with Kobe. Um, I'm like, I'm not understanding what the issue is with Emily's parents. Okay, they have an issue with their daughter being seen as a piece of property, like she's not a human being. And so they are they're struggling with that. Okay, so what's the alternative? Okay, this is their tradition. This is tradition in their culture for eons and eons of years. So what do you suggest? Emily's mom and dad? What do y'all suggest? So y'all want to convince these people to not go with their tradition that's been in their family, you know, for forever. Or maybe do y'all want to just pack up and and leave and say, look, we're not doing which you have the right to, which I'm not understanding why you're not doing that. If it's bothering you that much, first of all, the kids are already married. They're already married. They already got two kids, a third on the way. If you don't like it, if this is not your cup of tea, then why don't you just leave and just tell them, hey, yeah, we ain't doing this. We don't agree with this. Okay, we're not going to do this. And then just go home. Like, I don't understand what the, why we have to have all of this contention and all of this, you know, disagree. Just go home. If you don't like it, if it's not what you, then just leave. Because you can't convince the family, Kobe's family, otherwise, this is what they do. This is their tradition. It's like somebody coming to America and saying, oh, I don't agree with the father giving his daughter away. I don't like what that symbolizes that, you know, a man has the ability to give a female to another man. I don't like what all of that entails. That's almost as if she has no choice. You know, it's like, you know, her father is the one making a decision for her. her father is giving her to another man as if she's just a piece of property. So y'all are not going to do that in y'all's wedding. They can't convince y'all to not do something like that. So you can't convince them to not do whatever they're doing. So either do it or go home. It's okay because Kobe and Emily are already (laughs) married and trust and believe when, uh, Emily's parents get on that plane better believe it Emily and her kids will be on that plane and if Emily's on that plane you better believe it Kobe's on that plane as well okay Kobe's not going to break up with Emily because y'all don't want to go through with this tradition he's not going to fall for divorce he's not going to say okay y'all go back to America I'm going to stay here with my family and my ancestors and my tradition because y'all don't want to do this bride bride thing no he's going to go along with y'all and he will never mention this again because he knows what side his bread is buttered on and so as long as Emily's dad is waking up every morning to go take care of Kobe Emily and all of their children and all their children to be Kobe's going to go along with the plan with whatever the hell Emily's parents want. I don't know what the big deal was. If you don't like it, go home. Otherwise, you know, play along. Uh, Like, I I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Okay, let's move on, y'all. Let's keep this train going. Jasmine and Gino. Okay, so it's the day that they're leaving Miami. Uh, Gino was still a little bit heated because of the fact that, uh, what's her name? Jasmine decided that she didn't want to have no damn babies with him. So they talk about the whole children thing. So Jasmine comes up with another stupid lie, um, excuse, 
just nonsense, just bull crap, telling him, well, I don't want to have a baby right now because can't you see how stressed I am? I have a lot of anxiety. I'm so stressed out. My alopecia is flaring. That's why I can't have a baby with you. Plus, on top of everything else, Gino, how is it fair to my two children in Panama if I were to have another kid here in America with you? And I'm like, what? What are you talking about? I'm pretty sure your kids in Panama will probably, I don't know how they're going to feel, but I'm just assuming that they might be okay with having another sibling. Your kids are going to come here eventually. So I don't understand. Like, what do you, girl, if you don't want to have any babies with him, just tell him I don't want to have any babies. Y'all, Jasmine has a new body. Okay, she paid a lot of money for this new body. She has, um, she's living in America now. She's starting a brand new chapter in her life. She ain't got no damn time for babies to get all bloated up and swollen with a pregnancy, go through all of the physical changes of a pregnancy, take care of Jasmine to me just comes across as extremely selfish and very self-centered. I don't see her wanting to give any time and attention to a new baby. How Gino doesn't see this. I don't, I don't know. I don't understand, but she tells him, you know, let's not, you know, do this now, this whole baby thing. Let's just wait and we'll, you know, talk, talk about having a baby later. And he believes her. He totally believes her. And he thinks that, you know, once she does her beauty pageant and her confidence comes back and she starts feeling better about herself, he totally believes that she's going to change her mind and want to have a baby. Gino, you will have a child if you want one, but it's not with Jasmine. It's not going to happen with Jasmine. I don't see Jasmine popping out no babies in this lifetime. She's got way too much freedom right now. She's got a brand new body. You know, she's been super glued and stapled and, and pulled and plucked. She's not going to mess all that up with a baby. I mean, unless I get with a surrogate. Maybe she'll, maybe she'll be willing to do it with a surrogate. But you better be the one. You better be ready, you know, to be the one to do all the feedings and the diaper changes and all of that. Because I don't see Jasmine, you know, wasting her time with no child. When she's got this brand new life to live. Moving on to Lauren and Alexi. Okay, y'all, Lauren and Alexi, they are draining me. Really, Lauren is absolutely draining me. So, it's the day after, her, whenever her surgery is over with. She's in recovery now. And, um. Um, she goes to the doctor for her checkup. The doctor's really impressed with how Alexi has been keeping up with the things he's supposed to keep up with. Like, you know, changing her. I don't know, what, whatever he's doing to take care of her. All the stuff that he's doing to take care of her. The doctor's really impressed. Um, Alexi decides to continue to stay with Lauren instead of going back home and dealing with the kids because he feels like he's the best one to take care of her and her mom can you know continue taking care of the kids back home lauren wants alexi to go home and take care of the children and her mom to come and take care of her um alexi's like no i think i'm the better one to do this so i'm gonna stay so he goes home for a hot minute while her mom is running errands and her his dad is there but his dad is not capable of taking care of all these three kids by himself so Lauren goes, I mean, Alexi goes home for a quick minute, you know, does some chores around the house, spends time with the kids. Then he plans on going back to, to, uh, Lauren and continue, continuing to take care of Lauren. I really don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care at all what's going on with Lauren and her surgery, her unnecessary surgery. My only question is, this is very disruptive. Her surgery is very disruptive to their lives. Um, is it? like is it disruptive to alexi's job does alexi not have a job like what's going on with that did he have to take time off from work does he have a job does he not have a job what's going on with that i don't know i don't i don't really think i care anyway that is the end of my review i don't know how i feel about angela and michael coming back <sighs> but they're here and they're here to stay. Thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it on your way out. Please don't forget to rate the video if you like this content. Please subscribe to my channel and I'll definitely talk to you later. Bye.